Okay. So we're moving on now to sequences and series. This chapter is, is a little bit different in flavor from a lot of the stuff that you've seen previously. Um, for sequences, it's still going to remind you a lot of kind of limits at infinity like you did way back in chapter one, right? Um, it, it's going to be very similar to that. Once we get into series, um, the closest thing that we've seen so far that's kind of comparable to what we're doing when we deal with series is probably improper integrals where we're not necessarily just trying to do a calculation and get an answer out at the end. Um, we're more interested in whether something actually makes sense. So a, a sequence is just going to be a list of numbers. A series is going to be what you get if you add up all the numbers on a list. And by list here, we don't mean a finite list. We mean a list that goes on forever. Um, and of course, if you're adding up infinitely many terms, then there's a good possibility they don't add up to anything, right? Um, they, they may kind of, you know, the values might jump around and, and never settle down to a value. They probably add up to some infinite value if they do add up. And so it's, it's interesting just to figure out when can we actually add these numbers up and get something sensible, right? Um, so we're more interested in almost like existence questions now rather than computational questions. And so that gets, uh, that gets a little bit tricky sometimes, right? It's a different philosophy. Um, than what you've been dealing with so far. Um, but we start with sequences. We can give a definition. Okay. So there are a number of ways of, of defining a sequence, but the kind of definition that most people tend to give is the following. So a sequence, and I guess we should say you know, we could consider sequences of, of other numbers. We could consider, we could consider sequences of complex numbers. We could even consider sequences of, of functions, um, matrices, vectors. There's lots of things that you can, can put into a sequence. But right now, we're just looking at sequences of real numbers. Okay, so a sequence is just going to be a function. Um, f. So I'm going to write it like this. It's a function f from the natural numbers to the real numbers. This is one way to write it. Um, so what do I mean here? OK, so what exactly do we mean by this notation, if you haven't seen it before? Well, what I mean is it's a function whose domain, so here n is the domain. The domain of our function will be the natural numbers. Okay. Um, so big N here stands for the natural numbers. And depending on who you ask, sometimes the natural numbers include 0. Sometimes they don't. Um, we'll, we'll allow 0 because sometimes it's convenient to have a sequence start at 0. So we're looking at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, right? Um, and so the idea is basically for every natural number, right, we can write those out in a list. And for every natural number on the, on the list, we write down a corresponding real number, right? So what we're going to have is something like, say, a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, and so on. Right? So we might, we might write it something like that. Um, so in other words, we could say that f of a natural number is a sub n. So a n here is, is a real number. Okay. So there's lots of things you can think of here. I mean, you can just write down any list of real numbers, and that's going to give you a sequence. Um, probably you want a sequence that follows some sort of pattern, right? So we might look for something like... You know, we might have something like this. Our sequence might be something like 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. And maybe by now you've guessed the pattern, right? So in other words, we can say here that f of n is just n squared. Um, Typically, we don't really bother with function notation for sequences. So more likely, how you're going to see this written, it would be simply as a n is n squared. Okay. Um, so any, any function that you can think of, you can write down like this, and you can 
you can get a sequence. Um, here's one that's, uh, that's sort of an interesting one. We could do this one. A n is cosine of n times pi. Um, so what does that give me as a sequence? Well, gives me cosine of 0, cosine of pi, cosine of 2 pi, cosine of 3 pi, and so on. Um, but we, we know the value of cosine at multiples of pi. Cosine of 0 is 1, cosine of pi is minus 1, cosine of 2 pi is 1 again, cosine of 3 pi is minus 1. So you get a sequence that just alternates back and forth, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. Um, another way that you could write this, and this is typically how you would express this, would be to say, well, it's minus 1 to the n, right? Um, now, normally, powers of negative numbers are kind of tricky things. We don't normally like to put negatives into exponential functions. Um, or, you know, we don't like to have a negative base for an exponential because um, square roots, for example, of negatives don't make sense. In fact, you know, most real number exponents, if you have a negative base, don't make any sense. Because for a real number base, right, we really, you know, it's one thing to kind of keep in mind is to remember that, you know, when we define a to the x, right, normally we mean e to the x times the natural log of a. So if a is negative, this doesn't make any sense, right? Um, but we can make sense of integer powers of, of any number, right? Because this just means multiply minus 1 n times. So that works, right? It's n minus signs. You're just counting how many minus signs you have. And of course, if you have an even number of minus signs, you have plus 1. If you have an odd number of minus signs, you have minus 1. So you can do things like that, right? Um, sequences that you might have encountered in a high school course would be things like arithmetic and geometric sequences where you just add the same thing every time or you multiply by the same thing every time, right? So something like, you know, adding, just counting by twos, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, or, or maybe you start at 1 and you add 5 every time, so you have 1 and 5, or sorry, 1, 6, 11, 16, so on, something like that, right? These are arithmetic sequences. Multiplying by 2, like we can do, you know, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, right? Geometric sequences, we can make sense of those. Um, you can also look at what are called recursive sequences, and we'll, we'll encounter a few of these. And this is something that, you know, is not a thing you can do with, with functions of a real variable, right? So if the domain is real numbers, this doesn't make any sense. Um, but if your domain is the natural number, you can consider these so-called recursive definitions. So you can look at something like, maybe we define a sub 0 to be 2. And we say, OK, I'm going to define a n to be, let's say, 3 times a n minus 1 plus 1 for each n bigger than or equal to 1. And then you can kind of work out what that's going to be, right? So you start off with a 0 is equal to 2, right? a 1 will be 3 times a 0, so 3 times 2 plus 1. So I get 7, right? a 2 is going to be 3 times a 1, 7 plus 1. So I get 22, and so on. I could keep going you know, adding more and more terms into that sequence, generating those terms. A uh, famous one that you might have seen is the Fibonacci sequence, right? So the Fibonacci sequence actually starts with two initial terms. A0 is 1, A1 is 1, and An is just the sum of the two previous ones, n minus 1, n minus 2, for each n bigger than or equal to 2. And so you can play around and you can see what sort of terms you generate there. You get 1, 1, and then 1 plus 1 gives me 2, 1 plus 2 gives me 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 13, 21, 
34, and so on. Um, so this is a very famous sequence. It's studied in a number of different scenarios. There's even a, a quarterly journal devoted just to this sequence, believe it or not. Um, so there's lots of interesting things you can do with sequences, and there's a lot of stuff you can study with sequences, and it's, um, it's kind of a gateway into studying calculus more abstractly, getting into analysis, right, the theoretical underpinnings of, of calculus. Um, a lot of things can be understood in terms of sequences. Limits, in particular, can be understood in terms of sequences. Um, we're just getting our, our toes wet here. We're just getting started trying to understand how things work. Um, we spend a little bit of time on sequences, and then we're going to dive right into series.